Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and today I thought we would just do something really fun. So let's get started. I want to paint an abstract today. So I've already taped down a piece of this Fluid 100 Cold Press 8x8 watercolor paper in the 140 pound 100% um, cotton paper. And I just taped it down with uh, painter's tape just at the very edge. I didn't want a big uh, lip on it, but I don't plan on covering the whole paper anyway. But I just want to play in that paper. And I think I'm going to play in some Daniel Smith watercolors today. So I've pulled out my uh, painter's diary, which I don't know if you've ever used the painter's diary. This is what it looks like when you get it. Uh, brand new, but what I like about these painter's diaries is you have the page with the boxes already there And of course you can make that yourself It's just convenient to being in a book and having a dust cover for each one to protect it from um, The page before so I love the painter's diaries And so what I've, I've actually got several now and whatever I put in here I go ahead and list on the front that this painter's diary has these brands in there um, and I love it because now I'm looking at the different colors and what they actually are and I thought today I would do an abstract blue green piece and so I have pulled Daniel Smith um, Serpentine Genuine this Kyanite Genuine and the Blue Appetite Genuine and so I have just put a little of those out here on my palette and that's the um, three colors I decided I'm going to do today and I thought it might be fun to do just like a square abstract or something like that maybe something in the middle and then perhaps we can do some mark making on top of that and then maybe even a botanical and I wanted to take this moment to share this book with you 20 ways to draw a tulip and 44 other fabulous flowers by Lisa Congdon and what I love about this if you're not comfortable or you just haven't thought of different line botanicals that you could draw on your pieces this book is full of so many good ideas that it would be very easy to pick a design and say oh yes let's do this and I can see all of the elements of it as a line drawing rather than as a three-dimensional flower and it might make it easier to jump into some creative botanical pieces um, for your art so I just thought I would introduce that and see like what can we create today can we add a botanical element and fun marks so let's get started 20 ways to draw a tulip I love that book so I've got some water over here I'm gonna make a pretty blob element in the middle and I've just pulled out my number four Princeton Neptune quill brush and we'll see if that's the brush I want when we get started papers dry I generally work on dry paper when I do my watercolors some people do wet on wet you're kind of in your your preference there what what do you want to work on as you're as you're going and as you're learning and as you're figuring things out you'll decide what you like to do And no rhyme or reason here. I'm just mark making and adding some color and getting on top of each other here with them just to create myself a, a base of something interesting to show through um, whatever we decide to do on top. And I'm making a square, but I don't want it to be perfect, so I didn't tape the square off. And I'm coming back in and just dipping some of these colors in so that they run and bleed maybe they get some darker areas as they're dry they're going to create elements of interest I hope um, so that's just my thought process here and on these two blues it's not a big gigantic difference in the two of them even though on my samples it looked I mean there is a difference but I'm kind of blending them in a way but that maybe there's not a big big difference but that's okay I like it anyway I almost am thinking what if I had some Payne's gray or something really dark that too much water there um, 
I would have had like a really dark one, like a Payne's Gray. That might be fun to drop in there. Ooh, you know what I could do? <laughs> I love throwing things at you as we're working. Um, back here on my little shelf, I've got um, several acrylic inks. Um, and here's the Payne's Gray. I also have Indigo, which I really like back here somewhere, I think. Um, and the Indigo is really, really dark. Yeah, Dale Rowney Indigo. What if... <laughs> I'm probably going to regret doing this. But what if we dip some ink in some of this while it's all sopping wet and kind of watch what that does and see like how that kind of adds to our pieces. And I can draw in here if I want to add some dark elements. I can just kind of touch that in there. Because while it's wet, this is the perfect time to do this kind of thing if you're going to mix your mediums and kind of change it up a little bit like that. Um, and I could spread this around a little bit, but I really wanted that super dark punch just as a contrast element because I didn't feel like I was seeing that contrast that I wanted. So don't be afraid to mix some of your elements like this. It's what gives you the interest and the yummy stuff. Okay, so I think what I'm going to need to do now, look at that came right around there. <laughs> could spread that a little further if I wanted. Um, so I think what I'm going to need to do is let this dry and then it'll be ready for us to add things on top. And I could also, um, before it gets too far gone, I could do some salt on it if I wanted to add some textures in an area. Oh, I could also, you know what I could do? <laughs> I could take some of the corrugated cardboard. This is one I haven't painted on yet. And as a texture, I could lay that somewhere to soak up stuff and add a texture. So you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just be brave. Tell yourself that. Be brave. And I got some salt here. Because now is the time to let some of these things do their magic. Oh, you know what else I got? <laughs> we got some granulation liquid which somebody's like how's that different than um this is the Windsor Newton granulation medium I'm gonna put some of this in a little pipette um how's that different than salt water and you, I was thinking you know what I bet this is salt water <laughs> So now we'll have a fun little opportunity to see how will three different um, texturizing elements, what will they, how will they be different and look. So let's let this dry. I'm going to set something on this so that it really stays and I'll be back in a minute. All right, I think we are dry. I hope we're dry under here. Oh, look at that love that look at that line right there that was exactly what I was hoping for and you can see our granulation medium up here super cool and I've got our salt over here so I've just got an old card and a little puppy dog barking I'm just gonna wipe the sand off of here sand salt <laughs> And then I can see the different texture that the salt gave us. So that's super cool also. And then I just put the salt back in the container. I'm not worried about contaminating my salt um, rather than throwing it in the trash can because these are big pieces and I like them. But if you're worried about salt contamination, you could have a separate jar and be really careful here on your paper. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. Got stuff down below. But when we're done, I think we're going to deckle these edges and we'll just cut off anything like that that we did. Why'd I do that? <laughs> and then I'm going to look to see, do I like the direction that that green is? Because I almost feel like I kind of like it this direction. 
So let's see. So I'm going to do some mark making, maybe some stenciling. Um, I've got some different things to mark make over here. I've got white pens. I've got white Posca. This is a Faber-Castell white pen. Um, will this mark make on top of the watercolor? Um, that might be kind of interesting. So now I'm going to mark make and just see, you know, what can we get? And this is a really good way to test out your supplies, figure out what your favorite pins are and how they work, because this is completely different looking than our Posca pin. Um, so that's very interesting, the differences there. Because Posca pin, I think, is more solid and a little thicker. So I like kind of seeing like how, how is this versus that because I get a lot of these in the sketch box and the art snacks and stuff, those little art boxes that I get. Um, I want to try them out sometimes. So I love that. We could also do some ink and you know I love the ink, but we could also, we could strategically mark make with a brush. You know, you don't have to always use a pen. You can use a brush if you don't have a pen and you could think, all right, what, what do I want to do? Maybe some lines. You know, so if you don't have a brush, it's no big deal. Use this ink with a with a brush instead of a dip pen. Not a big deal. And I know I don't show that very often. I, I tend to kind of go to the things that I love, love, love. Um, but think outside the box and think, well, how can I do this if I don't have the same tools and I want to kind of do something similar? How could I do that? And look how beautiful little dots the brush does. So don't get hung up on these abstracts if you're thinking, I don't have the same tools. That's not the goal of these. The goal of these is to experiment with what you have and figure out how can you make the things that you have work in your creating. How can you be creative with the tools that you've got? Oh my gosh, I love some gold dots. <laughs> like just this little gold dot and white marks have already made this more fun, hasn't it? All right, so there we go. We got a little bit of our yumminess in there. And you know, we could come back. Got the little Posca going here. So we could come back in the middle of that Faber-Castell white and do some really thin lines. We're kind of like layering our decorations here. Ooh, look how pretty that is when you add like extra little marks in there. Super fun. Whoa, super fun. We could do some little dots over here in this one just to give us some extra yumminess when we get closer and take a look. I've got some King's Art pins here. I've never tried them before, so I'm going to try them. Oh, here's a brush one. So maybe, and here's another one. It was like a, a white one. Oh, that's the white one. Oh, that was the Fiber Castell one I used. Maybe we could say what kind of flower could we pick out of 20 ways to draw a tulip? What kind of flower could we pick to draw? See, I was kind of thinking some of those, I think I saw it earlier. Let me see here. See, like something like this is kind of speaking to me. I like that. Oh, I like, I kind of like these here with some circles and a dot, or even like these. Those are cool. Ooh, I like that there too. All right, I'm gonna use the uh, King's Art L brush pen 
And, you know, we could practice a little bit before we got to our final pieces. Oh, here's a, see how pretty that little abstract is? <laughs> I was just painting random backgrounds. But look at that. We could take this background and practice and see, is this pen going to do what we want? And then you can say, did I like that? I got a little leaf out here. And then you could decide if that, did we like that or not? Um, maybe I want something tall with just leaves. Yeah, maybe I want something tall with just leaves. Maybe we'll just do some type of vine kind of coming up. So that's kind of fun. We could come in and fill the leaves in if we wanted them dark, but I kind of like them like that. And I could still do some mark making and fun playing on top of this if I wanted to, if I needed to add some more marks, dots, interests, what have you. This is a black Posca pen. Come back and make some pretty extra decorations here with the leaves. Super fun. And I could do a layer on top of that if I wanted to. Kind of thinking something half tone circle y, maybe. Whoa, why not? <laughs> I don't get very hung up on stuff. I'm just like, let's just jump in and go for it. Are we thinking in white? Are we thinking in gold? What are we thinking? Because we got some gold. I'm kind of feeling like, what if we do it like along the bottom here? Ooh, or, I don't know. Hmm. I need you to vote. Let's get some of our paste out. And do some stenciling. Because I'm in a stencil mood. And I want to finish in touch. Oh, we could do a color though. Alright, is it too late to decide? Hmm. Because we've got little dots. Uh, let's just do a few. We know we love them. Maybe I'm thinking a color. Like, do we want a color on top of that? Something that's going to be a little extra pop. Let me get into my little acrylic paints over here. Ooh, or... <laughs> hold up. <laughs> or we could get into our little pastels. Yeah, let me get into this drawer down here. Let me just pull out my little sennelier's. Let's see. What if we take this kind of crazy green goldy number 206 and add some color? Let's just see what this is. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that. I don't know. It could have been a little greener though. Do I have one that's a little greener? Less green goldy? Let's see. I do have this one. What do you think? Maybe this inside of this? Let's do that. Let's just... Let's just jump in. I love how creamy these are. It's ridiculous how good they feel. It's like painting with lipstick, basically. Maybe a little bit of this in between. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that. <laughs> Definitely liking that. Let's do a little up here. Kind of like it was going off over here. And then, of course, now that I put this pastel on it, I'll definitely uh, spray it a little bit with this Sennelier Oil Pastel Fixative. Because if I don't, those oil pastels never really seem to actually dry. And is there any little pop of anything else that we want to add to this? Because we could. We could add any other little pops right now. Just kind of thinking about it. Hmm. Like what if we came back in here with like a pop of something totally unexpected? Because that would give us some other little hmm in there. Do we want to do that? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe let's just do a little over here and see. That way we're not 
fully committed, but we've kind of said, okay, maybe. I kind of like that. Just a little scribble in here. It's not as bright as I was thinking it would be, but that's okay. It is just interesting as another layer in there. And another color, 202. What was that other pink? This other pink was 236. Let's just set this over here. <laughs> All right, I like that. <laughs> okay, that's some fun stuff. Just little layers and fun things, just playing. What if we, let me move these paints out of the way before I make a big mess. So, make sure there's nothing on my fingers. And let's pull the tape. And I'm going to deckle these edges with that fun little deckle trimmer. Which you got to kind of be careful with that because this piece has these pastels on it now. And if we've got pastel near the, the plastic piece that we're leaning on to trim, look how pretty that is. Um, we'll get pastels down on our trimmer that we will transfer to other pieces. This is what I mean. So under here, if we get any art under here, that'll transfer to other pieces. So you want to lift this up occasionally and clean any of that off with your microfiber cloth and make sure that none of that is sticking under there. Because any, any paint and stuff that you've got on there from a previous piece will transfer. Now, if you've got some spots and you're like, oh, I don't think I love that over there, take like your, um, like a Posca pen or some other uh, little pen that you have and turn those areas into part of the art. But don't do it in just that one spot. If you come off the edge with these pieces over here, pick another spot to then, you know, come off the edge and make it look like that was on purpose. So don't get, don't get upset when you've got some spots that you're like, oh no, it ruined it because no, it didn't. You just need to get creative and changing that into part of the art. Look how we did that. <laughs> okay, I'm loving that. Let's check it out. <laughs> we got different layers. We've done some fun stuff. I hope you liked having a little peek in one of my favorite books to reference for botanicals, which was 20 Ways to Draw a Tulip with Lisa Cogden. Hope you have fun with this project. Definitely uh, tag me on Instagram if you want to share what you're working on at Two Little Owls Art. You can join the Facebook group that I've got for the art peeps. Um, and I've got everything linked below the video for you. All right, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.